Wildlife conservation was changed forever when legislation was passed to enact a law to protect our most vulnerable species and habitats. The year 2022 marked 49 years since the passing of the Endangered Species Act and nearly 40 years since the critical work to recover the California condor began in North America. My name is Kelly Sorensen, Executive Director of Ventana Wildlife Society, and I've spent my life working to restore wildlife to nature. So I'm thrilled that Les Lobot Jr., the man who drafted the Endangered Species Act, is coming to talk with me about where conservation started in America and where we're heading in the future. Les, thank you so much for coming here today to talk with me about the Endangered Species Act. You're welcome. Um, tell me about your childhood. How did you become interested in, in wildlife in the first place? Uh, uh, I think it. I think it was a combination of a couple of factors. Uh, part of the family um, were ranchers, and so I would visit those ranches and and the open spaces and the animals that you would see there and interact with uh, were magical for me. And uh, so I had the opportunity to live and work in my life in in uh, North Africa, and I think that. Uh, there was one kind of defining experience. I was actually riding a horse by the Cebu River in Morocco. And I uh, listened and heard these uh, chicks screeching from the uh, cliffs that were off to my left. And I stopped and, and looked around and I noticed that the parent birds were lying on the ground. They had been killed. Mm -hmm. And I knew that the chicks were up there on, up on the cliffs. And I climbed up there and uh, retrieved them, brought them home. My indulgent uh, parents allowed me to put them in a uh, little basket and sleep with them basically in the bed because they need to be fed all the time. Uh, and they were falcons. And so I raised those. And I think in that process, I just developed an extreme fondness and appreciation of the beauty of wildlife, particularly mm -hmm. birds of prey. Well, thank you again for sharing that background about uh, your experiences and how you became interested in wildlife. Um, I have a similar experience in that I had a chance to raise some screech owls when I was a kid. And uh, my mom uh, grew up in Minnesota and loved hearing owls. And for some reason, we weren't hearing owls in, in West Virginia uh, at that time. And uh, so I had this opportunity to raise these cute little screech owls. We released them right out my back window. And for months afterward, they would come back to the house and call. And, and uh, my mom just loved it. So it was a, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, and I think that's really what got me uh, really interested in, in birds of prey in, mm. in particular. I'd love to hear more about what was it like uh, working for Senator Cranston when uh, you know this this issue came up in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, it was a a period of time in our history that was very divisive within within the United States, but at the same time, it was a period of time where people were looking for new answers and new approaches to things. Cranston uh, saw that I was from California. I was in Georgetown in Washington, D.C., and I got a note from the dean that the senator would like to see me. Please come over and uh, meet him for a photo op. So I went over there and um, sat in the lobby and was told repeatedly by his receptionist that the senator was tied up in a series of meetings and still wanted to see me. And so I went through my book bag, finished all my homework, and there was a book on the coffee table, which was a book of uh, the large great birds, the birds of prey, and including the, uh, the condor. And so it was a coffee tail book, mostly just pictures. And I was thumbing through this book, and a man came up, stood next to my uh, left shoulder, and tapped me on the shoulder. And, and I looked up, and he said, you seem to be upset, young man. What are you upset about? And I told him I was upset about what was happening to these birds and to the environment, and nobody was doing what ought to be done to protect them. And so he, this guy turns to me and he said, uh, well, if you feel really strongly about something, you have a moral obligation to do something about it. And then about three weeks later, I got another note from the dean at the law school saying that the senator would like to uh, see me again. And so I went and uh, found out what this was about. And he said he was thinking about what I'd said. And he asked me, could you put down on paper what you would do if you were me in terms of the bill? So I took a piece of yellow paper and I wrote an outline of of something I called the Endangered Species Act. Today we're seeing the results of the Endangered Species Act now almost 50 years later. And there mm -hmm. have been some really great success stories. The bald eagle is completely recovered. Mm -hmm. Peregrine falcon is completely removed from the list. Mm -hmm. And we're doing some great work with condors too, I think. Yes, you are. Kelly, I have a question for you. When 
uh, on that coffee table book that I mentioned there, uh, when Cranston came up, I was actually looking at the bald eagle, picture mm -hmm. of the bald eagle, and I criticized the government for not protecting the symbol of the country. <laughs> um, but I understand that you and your organization have done a great deal in terms of saving the bald eagle. Would you tell me about that? Yeah, thanks for asking, Wes. Uh, that's what brought me to California in the first place, actually. In 1991, I came out to uh, release some bald eagles that the organization was collecting from Alaska and British Columbia. And uh, we released them from a 30-foot tall tower down in Big Sur, actually the same location where we release condors today. And uh, we released a total of 70 bald eagles, and uh, the goal was to have four breeding pairs in all of Central California, and our last count, we had 30. Congratulations, thank you very much. Thank you. Les, why is recovering endangered species important to you, and what do you hope for the future? In my mind, there is an interconnection between all of us as individual people and the entire environment, and that's true for the generations to come. And the more species that are preserved and healthy, uh, the better, more healthy that environment will be in the future and more beautiful. And I think uh, it's an obligation of people to leave the world better than they found it if they can. You know, and it, it saddened me to think that uh, there were so many animals almost gone and some that were gone. And, you know, I felt kind of powerless at the time. Um, but you know, having the Endangered Species Act changed all of that. It, you know, it, it's been around as long as I've been around, and, and it's, uh, it's helped shape my life, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just been a, a wonderful opportunity for me. Yeah, I think, uh, um, I think when it was written, there was a time where people felt that uh, they needed to seize their own, their own issues, their own strength, and, and work to change things for the better. But there was not a lot of concern about preserving and protecting the environment in which they lived. And so it was, one, it was a view of conquest and conquest of nature. Mm -hmm. And it took us a long time before we, I think we came out of that. That's interesting. Thinking back uh, to our conversation earlier, we were talking about our childhood and mm -hmm. sort of being disappointed that uh, the state of, of the environment and, and, and wildlife was what it was. Um, we've had a lifetime to try to change that. How do you think we're doing? Oh, I, I think we're doing very well. I mean, I think there's a lot more to be done. Uh, I think people like you and I know like me, uh, when I look back on things, the regrets I have tend to be things I wish I had done. This is a long-term process to keep the environment and the people who live within it and the animals that live within it and the plants healthy. Yeah. Well, Les, it's so great that you came to meet with me today. I'm, I'm so glad that we had this chance to talk and get up to the, uh, the condor sanctuary and, and see some condors. Uh, just, I, I'm just honored to, uh, to, to see you here today and to call you my friend. So thank well, you so thank much. Thank you very much, and I just uh, appreciate all you've done. And I hope you continue to do it as effectively as you have. Thank you very much. I'll do my best. Thank you. <laughs>